Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Speaker MC Show. The Speaker MC Show is all about relationships. We talk about how you relate to yourself, how you relate to others, and how you relate to your environment. And I am your host for the evening, Marcia Chambers, aka Speaker MC. Our show is entitled who do you think you're talking to? And this show deals with interpersonal relationships. How do we deal or relate to other people? And I really like this little blurb right here, this mem. It says, a gentleman will open doors, pull out chairs, and carry things. Not because she's helpless or unable, but because he wants to show her that she is valuable and worthy of respect. I really, really like that little blurb. I really, really like that little saying. And I think that that just carries through to the topic of our conversation tonight. So on the Speaker MC show, it's 60 minutes of free flowing information and it's candid conversations with myself and two guests. And we talk about the topic. And as I said before, the topic tonight is, who do you think you're talking to? So it's dealing with communication. We are going to delve in deep. We're going to dive deep because we're going to talk about what exactly is ineffective communication or what exactly is communication. We know it's a skill set. And then we're going to talk about how it shows up. How do you see ineffective communication in your everyday lives? And then our guests and I will give you some solutions, some tips, and some tricks. But as I said, we have some guests. And I just wanted to introduce you to our guests tonight before we start our show. Our first guest is Javida N. Miller. And Javida is an enhancement mentor. But not only that, Javida is a mother. She's an entrepreneur and a motivating yes. force for women. Javida empowers women to live confident and authentic lives unapologetically. She helps them to reach their full potential by showing them how to tap into their own greatness. Please put your hands together and welcome Ms. Javita Miller. Hi, Javita. Hi, hello everyone. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And our other guest, Miss Juanita George. <coughs> Juanita and I go way back. Juanita is a pastor, she's a prophet, and she's an entrepreneur. But she's more than just that. She's a mother, she's a confidant, she's a entrepreneur, visionary, trainer, life coach, motivational speaker, and friend to all, especially to those who feel rejected, friendless, and less likable. She has a very vibrant, bold, sassy, and welcoming spirit. And currently she hosts a television and radio ministry program called Thy Kingdom Come, where love and praise conquers all. Please put your hands together and welcome Jovita. At the Juanita. <laughs> See, I'm getting confused with the J's today. <laughs> there's Juanita and there's Jovita. All right, all right. And of course, as I mentioned to you, hi, Juanita. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm so excited to have these two ladies on the show. They are so bold in spirit. And as I mentioned to you, I am your host. I am Marcia Chambers. I am a speaker consultant, and I'm also known as Speaker MC. I'm an online personality hosting this show, the Speaker MC Show, <coughs> excuse me, which airs live at 9 p.m. on alternate Mondays. On Saturdays, I help to co-host a hot, hot radio show with DJ Tony Bennett and DJ Mackey. It's called The Rebel Soul Show. And my latest project is called S-W-E-L-L -L for Women, which is Sexual Wellness and Empowered Living Lifestyles for women, where we urge women to give themselves permission to be sexual and sensual. And coming next month, you'll be looking at 
Swell TV. So stay tuned for that. All right. Okay. So before we go in <coughs> to the show, I'm going to pause the share and we are going to pause for the cause, which is a commercial break. Sounds good? All right. Mm -hmm. So here we are. There's a lot of clicking going on, right? Oh, sorry. All right. So that was our little commercial break. And we are going to go back to our show. As I said, tonight's show is all about relationships. And I, before I brought on the show, there was a little blurb that I saw earlier today. And I thought that it would be very interesting to kind of give us an idea of what exactly is communication. Because we know that communication is a skill set, right? And because it's a skill set, you got to know how to speak to people and you got to know different ways and different ways that you relate to people and know that they're responding to you. So I'm going to bring up another video clip and give me one second see when you're doing everything yourself oh, my goodness can you see the video no okay hold on one second let me just share the screen that's the reason why okay okay now can you see it Scroll down. Okay, yes. Wow. I thought that this video was so interesting. <laughs> what do you guys, what do you guys think about that? It was very, very, <laughs> it's kind of how we communicate in, um, in our world today. You know, you hear one thing and they're actually trying to say something else and you're just not really getting your point across. Exactly. Exactly. So what do you think about that, Juanita? <clears throat> well, I agree, too, because the thing is, he was saying one thing. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's about being able to speak openly and honestly. And that's the most important thing. And he went around the topic. She's, you know, she stormed out 
And when she went into the next room, then she expressed over emotionalism. Mm. So she practice. said, she's, he said one thing and she heard something different. Yes. yes. Right. So yeah. that, that always happens. Well, I shouldn't say it always happens. It, it happens frequently with verbal communications. And I know that there are studies that are done. And one of the n number one reason for couples getting divorced or separated or just calling it quits is because of the lack of communication, whether it's ineffective or just none whatsoever. And they just get divorced because, oh, I can't talk to her. Oh, she doesn't hear me or he doesn't hear me, that kind of thing. So that might be also because he's saying one thing or she's saying one thing and they're hearing something totally different. How do you, how do you think that, um, or I want to hear your commentary based on ineffective communication. I know I've gone to dinner and I've seen couples actually sitting together at a table and they're both either on their phones tweeting or whatever they're doing and mm -hmm. they're not talking to each other. I think that that's so disrespectful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even, even parents and children being out. I, I'm, I've seen whole families out and everyone has their devices out, they're clicking, clicking, and they're just eating. No one's saying anything to each other. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's about the first thing, the breakdown of communication comes when one is not listening. So one, one first, they have to, you have to have one person that's listening to what you're saying. The person who is speaking must be open and honest. With you know, what they're saying? But yes, with what they're saying. Because the thing is, sometimes people, you know, let's say maybe he was beating around the bush. Maybe he was saying, oh, the floors are, you know, are looking old. But he was, uh, maybe in her mind, she interpreted it as, are you saying I'm looking old? You know, yeah. but mm -hmm. she's looking in a book, trying to find a method, trying to find whatever what type of flooring that they need. So that was a conversation that she interpreted in her own head, which was not true. Mm. You know, a, a friend of mine said that, um, and, and when she said it, it kind of went like, yeah, okay. But, but the more I do this and the more I pay keener attention, men and women speak differently. So mm -hmm. the, the guys would probably be very short, succinct, to the point, not thinking that anything gets lost in translation, whereas the woman has to give a whole diatribe and background and, you know, it just, and he hears it as wah, 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 you know? Right, right. <laughs> well, based on this video here, um, you, they're not even looking at each other. So there's that type right there where you, she doesn't really know what he's trying to say because they're not looking at each other. So basically that's one breakdown right there in that particular exactly. scenario. Body language, um, right. Communication. And you're right, men and women speak different languages. Um, we do that all the time. And I guess in relationships, you have to learn. Right. You, have, you have to learn how each other speaks and you also have to listen to hear everything, not listen to respond. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we listen to respond by listening to really hear what the other person is saying. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and sometimes you are not really listening. You, you're acting as if your body is saying that, yeah, you're sitting there and you're hearing what I'm saying, but you're not really listening because now you're trying to think ahead of what they could probably be asking about and then try to think ahead of what, what your answer is going to be. So you're not even focusing on what this person is saying, you know? Yeah. A lot of things get lost in translation. So that's the verbal. So what about the nonverbal? Do you want to deal with that, Juanita? I the... Yes, I'll deal with that. I just wanted to say one thing. I don't necessarily agree that women are necessarily the, always the storytellers and not direct. I know men who are extremely long. -winded. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I think that that long-windedness or wanting to tell uh, 
a story, uh, it has to come sometimes with the position that they're in. If you are uh, a leader, sometimes leaders don't want to listen to other people. They want you to be direct, succinct, and okay, on the spot. You know, what is it? Get to the question. You know, like even today, I was um, I was giving a donation someplace, mm-hmm. and when I got in, I was he he said, "Where did this come from?" So I was trying to explain to him where it came from. He says, "What is the question directly so he didn't want to hear you know he asked one question which i was explaining that part of it uh-huh. but you know so the thing is it's a method of both people wanting to listen to one another in any place or time uh and then being honest so sometimes in the story you have to weed out the direct <laughs> questions you have to weed out Oh, I'm trying, you have to weed out manipulation. Oh, I'm going to, you know, get them to change their mind about this. You have to just be, okay, you know what? Uh, Well, let's say uh, both of you are um, sexual health experts. So if a woman uh, would like to, you know, uh, well, we're not talking about sex here, would like to be sexual with a man, Mm -hmm. uh, one, she can seduce, be seductive in some type of way, you know, maybe her clothing or whatever like that, but telling a long story about it, or she could just be direct and say, you know, I'm really attracted to you, you know? So, I mean, but that may be too direct. So I don't know. I don't want to go into another area, but my thing is men and women, honesty and, uh, Weeding out trying to get manipulation of the other person. I think sometimes stories try to get you uh, people on your side. You Sometimes you're going into, oh, you're wanting people to feel sorry for you, this, that, the other thing. Uh, detail orientated, yes, there are details you need to put into things, but you have to be in perspective and get maturity and say, okay, this is what I need to say and I don't need to say. And as speakers, all of us, we need to know when to speak and when to stop speaking so that our audience could then, you know, we know when we're losing the audience. Uh 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 And it's the same thing when we're speaking one-on-one with people. We have to know when when, when we are just, when we're not being direct enough. Okay. I like that. Uh, Javita, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I, leave, I agree with everything um, Juanita has said thus far, as far as you know, you have to like, have to know, like weed out the manipulation, like she said, but that all com- comes with listening, like mm-hmm. really listening to hear what's being said instead of listening to really kind of respond to something. Because sometimes we, as people, we just listen and we hear one thing and miss the entire part of the whole conversation because we're focused on that one thing that we've heard. And so we're ready to respond to that because, oh, we might not want to forget. But if we just take the time to just listen to the whole thing before, you know, responding and we're letting it sit in, then, you know, I think we'll be able to communicate more effectively. We'll hear, really and truly hear, what the other person is trying to say, or at least saying. And I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people, and Mm -hmm. I should, I'm sorry, I should not broad stroke it like that. Nowadays, people tend to not want to, they're so impatient. And Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's narcissism or what it is, but (laughs) they just want to cut you off. And you're saying something and mid sentence, they just cut you off because they think they know what you're going to say, or they think, they know what the answer is to whatever the question is that you're posing. So this is, this is one way, and I wanted to bring in this segment. So where does it show up? How can we recognize when someone is being an ineffective communicator? And it's not just, you know, intimate relationships. It's all across the board, even in a work environment, or even you go to the store and a simple, sales transaction or you're maybe not even buying anything but you're asking the salesperson where is or how do i locate or you're explaining your issue with something so 
can you tell me some other instances where this ineffective communication might show up? Oh, definitely in the boardroom, um, at church, you know, like you said, just walking in the mall. It can happen anywhere. Um, it's also that tone of voice is when you can recognize it too, because how you say things uh -huh. may come across as um, someone won't receive it the right way, the way you want them to receive it. So you really have to check your tone of voice when speaking and listening to people. You have to really check that because you could be saying the same thing you would say calmly, but your tone of voice could make it like, can escalate uh -huh. and it wasn't really meant to be escalated. Uh -huh. Right. And some and someone could misread your passion or right. excitement for anger, right? An attitude, right? Yeah. Sorry, Juanita, you were going to say something. No, I was, I was saying correct. I mean, an old line that they have: uh, "Honey is better than vinegar." But mm -hmm. the thing is, sometimes we don't learn how. To, we're not really trained per se how to communicate effectively at home. If you grow up in household where there's bickering and arguing or or there's no one really speaking to you mm. at you and commanding you then you don't have anyone to practice being kind with uh practice you know expressing yourself in a good way as well in as in an escalated way but in the escalated way being corrected to know you know you don't speak that way in this instance. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, I mean, we get, you know, kids may get upset and angry and they will try to, try to yell at their parent or whatever like that. And then the parent goes, no, you know, you shut your mouth. You, you're the child. You're not to speak. Right. So now, okay, yes, you can say that in that instance. But then you go back with a lesson for them afterwards. After they're corrected, you go back to the child with a lesson and say, okay, now here. Now, if you're in this environment, or you show them, like what I would do with my daughter, I would show her things that she was physically out. You know, like if someone was arguing with a cashier or whatever, I would say, okay, look at this. Or let's say you're in line and then an argument starts. Mm -hmm. And okay, did you see all of these things that happened? What was wrong and what was right? And so that's how you get your children to start learning how to effectively communicate by showing them the good communication and bad communication. And then you either, you have, when you just find out where your child's mind is. Say, okay, what would you do different? And then correct them from there so that when they are out in the community, they know how to deal with things, how to speak to people, how to do things. Because we don't teach effective communication to our children. And then they go out, especially, you know, our young men and things of that sort, and they, you know, they don't know how to speak to people. And sometimes they're speaking the way they speak at home. They're speaking mm -hmm. in the community. And they may be in a different community that doesn't understand this is not them being obnoxious. This is just the way they communicate. I'm glad you said that because there's so many things that affect us as adults. And it stems all the way back to our initial learning stage at home. Mm -hmm. You know, they say charity begins at home. It definitely does begin at home. So, yeah, and you get, you, you get these small, rude kids growing up to be rude adults that don't know how to speak to someone because they're so used, as you say, to being spoken at as opposed to being a part of a conversation, so to speak. You know, they talk, their parents talked at them, and they don't feel as if, you know, they had anything to say. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. I really am. Wow, look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be fair to you guys. So I am going to take a break and we're going to go into our commercial again. Yes. And after we come back from our commercial, we are going to talk about solutions. What are the solutions that we can bring to the table with regard to ineffective communication and communication breakdown. So stay tuned for our commercial.
And there you have it. <laughs> Are you? So now we're going to go back to our show. Uh, give me one second here. Yes. Woo! There's a lot of things going on in this little show. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about the solutions. Now, we've discussed how ineffective communication, how it shows up. We discussed that communication is kind of a skill. We discussed that it might stem from our early rearings, how parents don't necessarily teach children how to effectively communicate. So that being said, what can we now bring to the table for our audience to let them know, okay, we understand what it is, and here are some tips and solutions how to prevent that so they don't end up in divorce court or separation or anything like that. They have healthy relationships, not only with their intimate partners, but just overall. How, Javita, you want to start? Sure. Um, I would say like the first step that I would advise people to do would be to learn how you communicate. Once you learn how you communicate, then you can kind of learn how others communicate. So especially with your family, let's start with your children. You know, you know how you communicate. Kind of listen to yourself while you're speaking to your children because it could be your tone of voice. It could be that you're not really saying or getting you know, your point across to your child. And your child cannot just be listening to you. So that's a good way to start, just learning how each other communicates. We all communicate differently. Like your child not doing, you know, what you want them to do could be their way of trying to reach out to you. But by not knowing that, you just, you just would look at it as being disrespectful. So you just have to learn the various ways people communicate. I know in my position in corporate America, um, I've been in very, various managerial positions, and I had to learn how my employees communicated so I could speak effectively, effectively to them mm -hmm. so that they're, I could get my point across, I could get the job done, and, you know, we're win-win. So that's one thing that I had to learn. It's a learned thing. It's a very, it's a learned behavior. Okay. Most definitely. So you have to learn it, but you have to be willing to learn that, too. Because if you're not open-minded and not willing to learn how the other person is communicating to you, you're going to always be talking all over them. So you have to be willing to learn. And take a step back and really listen. Okay. Really, really listen before responding. Maybe take five seconds after the person has said what they said and repeat with a question. So a clarifying question. So that you make sure you're on one accord. Because if I'm you don't do that, you're just responding and that may not be what the person is saying. I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is also something that is taught to physicians and it's taught to a lot of coaches that first you have to, under, and especially as speakers, you have to understand your audience. That's mm -hmm. number one. And in understanding your audience, mm -hmm. you got to know that if you say something, let them repeat it back to you so that you know that they understood what you, what they heard mm -hmm. and it's, it's received in the correct manner. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you for that. Juanita, anything you want to add to the script? Well, I have, um, as a deliverance pastor, you may have some areas of deliverance that need to take place in reality. Some people have spirits around them. I mean, that cause that breakdown in their ability to attempt to communicate well. They're fight all the time. So, so there may be those areas. I mean, this is just a whole other different level. It may have some spiritual things that need to take place. Uh, in deliverance, that's one thing that will happen. Uh, part of that even too in, in, is that um, if a person has come up in an environment where they were put down a lot and they were uh, handled in a more harsh 
or not caring way and they have a lot of those things going through their head, then that's a factor as well. The negativity will come up in the way they walk, just nonverbal things. Uh, even the example, the video you have, he was leaning across the uh, counter looking at the book, but his posture too, it, she, you know, we, uh, Javita noted as well that they were not looking at each other. Mm -hmm. When you're looking mm -hmm. at a person eye to eye, it gives a sense of honesty, respect, and, and just, it's a trusting environment. Uh, an old school method, people used to say before all the technology and all, uh, they would say, well, I need to meet you face to face to talk about that. Mm. That's right. Mm. Well, they, they, you know, so, and the reason why they would want to speak to you face to face is so that they could see one, you face to face, you know, do an eye to eye with you, but also two, so they could feel your vibration and see, you know, are you really being honest about who, what you're saying? Let's see mm -hmm. if it's a transaction or anything, you know, and then if you're too nervous or you're feeling fear or doubt and stuff, a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some things that I noticed, some things that I noted in uh, communication that were issues was negativity. Negativity uh, internally, let's say if you're carrying a lot of baggage from your past, from things that were said to you when you're a child or even things in a relationship, or domestic violence or issues and things like that, that could come out in sweat. You may be in something where, you know, you didn't, st you start remembering it, you start sweating, um, or you feel tired, you know, or even to some points, if it's so long term with you, that you have all these negative things within you that you can't get rid of or you're not delivered from, it could come out even in body odor. Sometimes people get stomach pains, so you get the physical body things. So the thing is, in order to communicate better, you have to get to the root of why you're not communicating well. Because it may not just be you're not learning how to communicate or learning or train well. Mm -hmm. You have other things that are underlying that cause you to be quiet. Maybe you saw your parent being physically abused. So you, so when you approach a leader or you approach a male or female authority, because mm -hmm. domestic violence is, goes both ways, male and female, you know. So you may approach a woman of authority and then it will remind you the time, you know, you know when something happened to your, your mom or dad with a person like that. And I mean, you may be 30, 40 years old because sometimes people, they're carrying around things for years and years and years. Absolutely. They haven't had a chance to express themselves and talk. Absolutely. They haven't had an honest place to talk. And that's the whole thing is having a listening ear. A lot of people have not had someone to listen to them. That's what goes into drug, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, a lot of addictions, even food addiction, all those things. Mm -hmm. It's because you haven't had someone to express yourself to. And that loving environment. Love is so important. First is self-love. So yes. my solution to it all is first applying forgiveness to yourself. For I mean, because that's what God gives us, forgiveness for all of our sins. Seen, unseen, heard, and unheard, and known, and unknown. And the thing is, as you forgive yourself, because sometimes we really want a relationship to work. We really do. Whether it be with our coworkers, our, uh, you know, just a, a, a love relationship. There's so many different types of relationship we have, and some we are like stuck in, and some we're like, I really don't know what I'm, what is, what's wrong with me. Hmm. I mean, sometimes yes, you start pointing, it's them, it's them, it's them. But then sometimes, then after a while, then even a person who's been pointing the finger will say, what's wrong with me? Hmm. You know, and how can I resolve this? And the first thing, you know, sometimes there's not enough first forgiveness of self and self-love, self-love in the sense of saying that, you know, you love yourself enough 
to to not feel like that you're inferior, that you're, you know, anything that's negative, pulling the positive points out of yourself. So as you pull out your positive points, then you're able to feel a confidence about yourself that lacked before. Some arguments and things are lack of confidence. Some people, yes. fight. Some people fight the lack of knowledge. Sometimes yes. people get in environments when a person knows more than them and they are afraid because let's say maybe you're in a work environment. I don't have a college degree. Like the new girl has a college degree. I want to fight her in a way <laughs> I because she's trying to take my job. <laughs> new girl trying to take my job. I'm so tired of her, you, you know? And so it, so mm -hmm. this is, you know, but if you're confident about, I've been here 12 years. So what mm. that new came in, mm. you know, I, I'm doing my work well. And then you, and then you take on the fact of learning something new saying, okay, you know what? Let me try to learn something new, even about myself and honesty. Honesty is just the solution. One other part of the solution is honesty, self-honesty. When we lie to ourselves, we come up against brick walls and doors closed. I like, I like everything that you've said. And I just wanted to touch on some points that mm -hmm. you said that when some people are not used to having time to talk or given the opportunity to speak, then those are the ones that go into other environments and they just seem like they just can't shut up. I have met certain men who are like that and certain women too. Mm -hmm. At home, they just are not allowed to say a word. But when they go everywhere else, oh my gosh, they just talk and 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 talk. And it's like, my goodness, don't you get to talk at home? And it's like, really, no. You know, so that's a very good point that you brought. And again, with the lack of confidence, some people, they are so unsure of themselves. And yeah, it all stems back to the root, you know, the early rearing, the childhood days, the, and, and even at that point, they grow up to be lack of self-esteem because it's over critical environment. Then they attract that kind of environment to them once they grow up. And then they feel as if, you know, oh, woe is me. What is it that I can never be relieved from this kind of situation? And right. if they're constantly criticized and constantly defending themselves, then they also tend to be ineffective communicators because they feel like the world is out to get them. So I'm yeah. glad that you brought up those points. Um, with regard to, you said something about the spirit. You're moving your phone. And we're not I, getting a good shot of you. My um, um, my battery. It seems like it's 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 just oh, going. it's going through a phase. Okay, well, we don't want to lose you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you it's connected. You mentioned something about the the spirit being on them. Could you just expound on that because I didn't really understand what that meant. Well, <coughs> let's say. Uh, you have um, uh, and maybe let's say the long-winded person. Mm -hmm. They uh, they sometimes, depending on the story, they may have a uh, a spirit of manipulation, where they're always trying to get people to to, to get their way. Uh, another one, um, because it could go into a lot of different things. I'm just trying to pick pinpoint a certain, certain ones. Uh, the spirit of, uh, anger and strife where they're always mad. They're, so, they're a little hot headed. Mm. You know, like there's some people who you could say, good morning. And, <laughs> and they take it another way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the anger, so so they may not have. So you, so first thing you have to uh, remove that spirit of anger and everything, and then you set a declare and decree a spirit of peace upon them. 
because they may because then they need peace because when a person is not at peace when the person let's say they may be tormenting spirits around them sometimes i mean some people they wrestle in the night that they can't sleep you know tuss and turning you, you know even if you take five or six pills they're still up all night long they're not at rest they're restless so then they take that restlessness that non-sleep spirit and they're tired and you know, and then they go into the world and then they start fussing at everybody. Hmm. Hmm. So, so we have to deal with the removal of the tormenting spirit. In well, how, how, how do you remove that? I mean, what do you do? Throw some cold water on them or something? <laughs> <laughs> there's prayers. There's, there's a method of, 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 of prayer and, 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 and deliverance. I mean, the, the, I mean, you could do self deliverance prayers uh, like that that combine a lot of different areas and mm. just go through them. Uh, I know uh, one, one, especially if I have someone who says that they have uh, problems, especially sleeping at night and things like that, there could be a couple of different methods. But one. Um, Don't they just take a pill for that? <laughs> Oh, no, the pills, the thing is, then you're going into addiction. Those pills, if you got to take a pill every single night, mm -hmm. it, it's too much. I think it goes back to, like you said, people being honest with themselves, the honesty part. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, um, it's, like you said, a lack of confidence and all that, but they have to be honest with themselves to know that's what their issue is. Because there are a lot of people who communicate in anger and always defensive and critical and all that, but they don't believe that they have any underlying cause. Right. They think that's just what it is. But if they really take the time to truly find that, find themselves, learn who they are, you know, sit still, you know, you know, become one with yourself, and to really figure that out. And I think that will help them along that spiritual to release those spiritual demons uh -huh. uh, that that could be hindering them from their personal growth. I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, so many people are in denial of who they really yeah. are. So many people are scared to even be with themselves because, you know, they don't know who that person is. Right. And it's, and, and it's, and it's scary. It's very scary. Oh, my goodness. So we have almost come to the end. And I really want to be able to give you guys your five minutes. And I wanted to touch base with our audience to see if anyone has any questions or comments or suggestions with regard to what they've heard here today, what was said. If you could just raise your hands in the chat box and let us know that you know you have some concern or you want to comment on something, we are more than happy to open the floor up to you. Just let me know who you are and I'll just... Uh, release the mute button. So until we get someone coming in, I wanted to again, let you guys know who our guests were. This is a speaker MC show and our topic tonight has been, who do you think you're talking to? Delving into the problems, how it manifests and the solutions with regard to ineffective communication. And our guests tonight have been Javita N. Miller and Juanita George. And right now we've, at, we've come to the point where I really want to give each guest five minutes to tell us a little bit about themselves, tell us a little bit about their events that are upcoming, tell us a little bit about their offer and how to connect with them, and what exactly is it that they, what gift they are bringing to the world. So I'll start, I started with Javita, so I'll start with Juanita. Juanita, five minutes. You want to tell us a little bit about <coughs> your, your entrepreneurial, pastoral gifts that you bring to us and how people can connect with you? Okay, uh, well, I'll start off with a question. The gift that I'm bringing to the world is uh, first sharing God's love and letting him know that, yes, God really does love you. Uh, that's shown in your fingerprints. 
you are the only person in the world who has your fingerprint. No one can be or do what you can do on this earth. If you die today, your fingerprints go with you. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you must know that, no, you don't have to believe in God. But the thing is, he believes in you so much, he gave you a set of fingerprints at first. To letting you know that, yes, there are people who love you no matter what state you're in. So I'm going to share God's love with you and help you grow in any any path that you're in. You could be, you know, I mean, everybody has different phases and times. So I'm going to share that with you. I, I share um, just a, a very clear, honest relationship uh, I have with people and the world. So if you need your life coaching, uh, motivation, work with you with that. Um, I also, the offer we have is for the uh, uh, free life coaching as well as uh, if you're interested, we have a, uh, you're interested in speaking on a, a, a certain uh, area uh, with us. Um, um, I'm going from memory here. Uh, uh, I had two offers uh, with you. One, uh, if they wanted to come on the radio program mm-hmm. on Saturdays, mm-hmm. uh, you can do, um, it's, it is uh, a Christian based, so we wouldn't do any, uh, unless it's Christian hip hop. Uh, so, I mean, you can pick all the songs and everything like that. Um, and we could just talk. I mean, if you have a testimony or whatever, it's Saturday morning, 8 to 10. I'm on Splash Radio New Jersey. Uh, the radio and the television ministry is Thy Kingdom Come, Where Love and Praise Conquers All. And we do have an honest, clear relation, relational talk weekly about how to live a reflective life of Jesus Christ. We don't have a traditional talk in the sense that we're just... Bible, we, we talk about things like this. I mean, I would have both of uh, jo, uh, Jovita and Marcia on, and we do have talks about sex. Yes. Yes! Church, you know, a church environment, and we, and we have done that. And we have done that, so it's not an issue. Uh, and we talk about all of those different areas. We talk about men being abused. We talk about uh, mentoring. We talk about we did a whole series on mental health. So we, we don't just go, we're not a traditional mm-hmm. setting. We're about the way the Lord has, he gave me a vision. He showed me what he wanted. And it's not about uh, pushing you into a church first. Yes, you need to have uh, a leader or pastor to train you and everything like that. But you must understand you must have a relationship with God. Right. Right. And you must know that it's not about you cleaning yourself up or you're this or you're that. He was confident in who you were in from the day you were born and even when you were in your mom's womb from the point of your creation time. He was confident that you were going to come in the world and do something awesome. I don't care if you're living on the street corner right now with no shoes, no clothes on. I don't care if you're a prostitute, whatever. The thing is, we can work through all of those things. Yes, there are spirits and things that we do have to do with. There is demons, and that, that is a real thing. So that's something we will discuss. You know, if you do the life coaching and everything like that, that's if that is an area that is needed in your life. Uh, I am uh, a prophet, so I mean, there are things that I may see in your life and share without ever knowing you or even seeing you that we will discuss and go through to help you live a better life. And they can connect with you on your cell at 917-226-7329. Yes. And I would that they text that they text first. Text you? Okay. Yeah, text first with their name and everything. Uh, because sometimes it's also it's my main line. So okay. if I'm on the line or or something like that. I always ask for text, and I could see, you know, um, that you're calling. So, or if the the line gets filled, then you are still connecting. And your email is loveandpraise at gmail.com. 
Yes. And okay. we also have um, uh, different business. I'm an entrepreneur. So if you want to start a business, you're having some business issues or you're a little stuck, we could work with you with that too in looking at uh, things you can do to improve those areas because that was something that I did in do um, in corporate America uh, was to go in basically and at that point where the business is going to the second level and working with them to get over that hump. Okay, all right. So you heard it here first folks she does a plethora of things so please make sure you connect with Juanita George pastor prophet entrepreneur mobile number 917-226-7329 text first with your name and love and praise at gmail she's offering one hour of life coaching free and daily money maker plan to get funds into your account worldwide and also to be a guest host on her radio ministry. Yeah, you pick your songs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juanita, for coming in tonight. And hold on, we're going to talk to Jovita and see what is Jovita's gift that she is bringing to us tonight as far as why, what is your fingerprint on this world, Jovita? Well, my fingerprint is that I am here to empower women to live confident, authentic lives unapologetically. Um, I have a passion for helping people, and that's what, why I'm here. I ran for my purpose for, for a while, but I know that's why I'm here. I always help people out. I have um, a couple of mentoring programs that I have right now. One is the Six Steps to Living a Purposeful and Passionate Life. It is a life-changing six-month mentoring program, which empowers you to discover your unique purpose and walk confidently in it. The other program I have is a VIP mentoring program, and it is a one-on-one -on -one program which focuses on strengthening and transforming your mindset so that you can start, so that you can continue to live a successful and authentic life. Um, both of those programs are near and dear to my heart. And the third thing I do is relationship consulting. And I offer free consultation. You can um, schedule that time with me, go to chat with chavita.acuityscheduling.com and you can schedule a 15-minute um, consultation with me and we can um, get started um, with the relationship consulting. And that consists of educating and providing expert advice on how to embrace your sexuality, the importance of sexual health, um, enhancing your confidence in the bedroom, and the benefits of relationship enhancement products. And I also have a couple of um, Facebook groups that I'm starting. Um, one for single moms is called the Mindset Rejuvenation Group, where um, it's going to be an online community where single moms can get in there and help support each other, you know, build that community, that family, that help. Because I know when I was raising my son, that's what I need. I built me a support system. I had my family, but I built an external support system that helped me out because I live miles and miles away from my family. So, um, that helped me out greatly, and I know that can help someone else out as well, especially, you know, a single moms. So um, follow me on, find me on Facebook with that one. That group is called Mindset Rejuvenation for Single Moms. And the other group I started um, is just to be the girlfriend series, and it's just girlfriends. You know, everybody needs their girlfriend. All women need their girlfriends, regardless, you know, if you're married or not. You need your girlfriends. You need that downtime just to kind of hang out, chill, and discuss things that goes on in women's lives, especially professional women. Like, we all go into, some of us go into corporate America, and we face these challenges, you know, sitting across the boardroom. Sometimes we are the only woman in the right. boardroom. So those challenges, and I mean, I really just want to build that community up as well so we all can share our experiences. You know, we have a whole bunch of people who are like in a whole bunch of different positions and they're in, they think they're in it alone and we're not alone. We all can share our experiences and how to get through them and the challenges of, you know, just being a woman, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And especially in a male dominated world. Cause that's the type of world I'm in right now is a male dominated world. So just having the support of my girlfriends, you know, that's the whole gist of that group. And you can find that group. Um, it's called Just Javita Girlfriend Series. And you can find it on Facebook. And I encourage everyone to, like, join one of those groups because I am launching some free things that's coming up real soon. And I will be giving more information in each of those groups. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
LinkedIn, YouTube, Jabita N. Miller or at Jabita N. Miller. Um, you can find me there. Um, what else? Chat with Javita Acuity. Yes, chat with Javita dot Acuity Scheduling dot com. Mm -hmm. you, can, you know, schedule your um, consultations with me, and that's about all I have to offer right now. But I have some fun and exciting things that's that I'm working on, and I will be sharing them via those outlets. Also, if you want to reach me, email is the best, and you can reach me at justjavita zero one at gmail dot com. Wow. I told you we had some fabulous ladies on the on the program tonight. They are doing a world of stuff. And just to piggyback on what they're doing, <coughs> excuse me, I am Speaker MC and I'm your host this evening. And on Wednesday, I am hosting a free webinar, Seven Steps to Happy Love Every Day. Hmm. And next Wednesday, which is March 1st, I'll be hosting a Swell Happy Half the art of communication. <laughs> That's all about the sex. <laughs> and on Thursday, I will be guest interviewing at the Let's Be Real radio talk show. So watch out for those events coming, coming to your radio, TV, online, coming mm -hmm. soon. <laughs> Our next show is going to be on Monday, March 6th, and we'll be talking about Focus RX, the cure for the anemic relationship. To piggyback on something that we touched on earlier, how people are sitting across from each other and they're in totally different zones because they're tip-tapping away. So we're going to explore the problem, how it manifests and the solutions for that. I really love this mem. One day someone is going to hug you so tight that all of your broken pieces fit right back together. I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So as I say, our show airs on Mondays, alternate Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So stick around for it. I noticed that no one raised their hand for a question. So at this point in time, I wanted to get some feedback from both of our guests before I close out the show. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Javita, <clears throat> how was your experience here on the Speaker MC show? Any tips that you want to offer as far as to make the show a little bit better or what you can say about the show? Did you not have a good time? Did you have a good time? <laughs> <laughs> Marcia, I had a wonderful time on your show. I like the format of the show, just informal conversation. So I think that's kind of like the easiest way to just have just a comfortable conversation about some sensitive topics. So I really, really enjoyed it. And I would definitely be looking at your lineup to see, you know, any other topics that I'll be interested in being a part of. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. I love that, love that, love that. And Juanita, how was your experience today on the Speaker MC show? I had a great time with both of you ladies. Uh, I enjoyed the pre-flowing conversation and it was just good to be just in an environment where we can just speak, mm -hmm. you know, to speak and, and just to share on the topic and everything. Um, and well, I hope that we could do something, something together again as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at the topics and everything. Uh, and um, I think we did a really good combination together with, you know, uh, maybe even we could all do a workshop or something to, you know, to really get people out. Because sometimes it's a little hard for people to um, you know, to express themselves in different ways. I mean, so then we could get them to apply it. You know, mm -hmm. get all groups and then they can start applying some of the methods and stuff like that, you know, so they could try it out. But sometimes to get people out of stuff, they have to try it out. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Well, I thank you both. I thank you, ladies, for coming on the Speaker MC show tonight. I, I am so honored that you graced this platform with me and I can walk this journey with you. I thank all the guests who joined us tonight. I would have hoped to have heard something from you guys, you know, something in the chat box or something. But if you chose to be quiet, then that's fine. That's okay. 
<laughs> I still appreciated you being here. And that brings us to the end of the Speaker MC show. And I always close with saying, people will not remember what you said. And people will not remember what you did. But people will remember how you made them feel. That's from Dr. Maya Angelou. So make someone feel good today and give a smile and have a fabulous day. Thank you for joining us and good night. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Good night.